Namaste Galactic Family Diamond Sun Hearts. We have a lot of Diamond Sun activations going on at this time. Uh, we have plenty of planetary Stargate locations and sacred locations that are activating at this time. The Temple Mount in Jerusalem. We have the uh, Mount Shasta. We also have Giza, Egypt. There's just so much. Uh, also Saqqara in Egypt. I've been getting some imprints from this location as well, but um, anchoring in a lot of diamond light at this time. Um, I'm starting to see where the diamonds are being revealed in the stargates themselves. So uh, there's a lot going on. So diamond sun hearts, welcome back to my channel, Indigo Angel. If you're new, come on into this dimension, guys. I hope you enjoy the cosmic content here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Better yet, smash the like button, guys, because we are going to get into it today. And if you're returning, don't forget to hit that notifications bell so you can continue to receive my messages and comment and share this video so others can find out about my work. And as always, thank you guys for your continued love and support of my channel. Also, my Patreon, my website, my newsletters, everything, how you guys participate in everything that I do. So I just appreciate you all so much. Thank you for being here. Cosmic blessings. I hope you guys are having a beautiful everything right now on this full moon, because we have a lot going on right now. The full moon in Sagittarius. We also have the lunar eclipse today. So I believe that's visible um, at some point in time tonight. So maybe you can get out and take a look at the moon and see this lunar eclipse. I'd say this is a Shala lunar eclipse. I have checked the astrology. The, uh, the moon was about at one degree Sagittarius. So it, by the markers that I go by, the side rail lunar nakshatra markers, I would say this is very much a Shala lunar eclipse. And so maybe expect those stingers uh, to fall away after this eclipse, because, you know, leading up until this, you may have been getting infiltrated by those holding the deepest, harshest judgments against you. Those typically come through the bloodline ancestral contracts. Um, and so, you know, expect these to lift energetically because more truth is being revealed through the eclipse with the eclipse, things fall away, things reveal themselves, things shift dramatically. And so it's just only revealing more truth to the ones that are casting these harsh judgments and also within you to see where and why these energetic cords exist in the first place. So a lot is being revealed right now for each of us to see ourselves more clearly. And what was casted as stones, sticks and stones, break your bones is now turning into a pebble in the river. And so a lot's washing away. Um, a lot of hydro hydro aspects, a lot of water aspects are kind of coming through this Sagittarius full moon um, and karma and timelines are just going to clear more. So we're going to have a nice spring reset, but then we're going to pick up on some planetary collective warfare. You know, we're heading into Orion season. So everybody fasten your seatbelts. There's going to be about four planetary markers culminating at Orion because I did check the astrology this morning. So the Orion collective field of existence on this earth is basically going to be most at work. Uh, solidifying all of those global dynamics that are fueling all of the human collective dramas and about the third to the fifth dimension. This is where it likes to play out, but it is playing out on all dimensions, technically coming through specific stargates that are allocated and strong held by the Orion signatures and by the Orion Royals. And so that's kind of just a ballpark figure where the Orions play here on earth, but hence why the Stargate of Aden has been blowing up my, my global radar for about three weeks, guys, you know, I've been diving in hard with that more is being revealed here. That's kind of what this update is about today is I have been seeing more into the Temple Mount. I've been scanning remote viewing into the Temple Mount, the energy structures here, what's actually playing out. And I got so much for you guys today. So much. 
Um, I also wanted to mention really quickly, though, some astrologers have said that this eclipse, particularly today, is in Antares. So, you know, that's a very war strategic star system, very militant. So it's, you know, putting the cunning edge on things. I do believe that's based upon Western astrological coordinates because Antares, I believe culminates at about nine degrees Sag, but I have always personally felt intuitively that that degree is a little bit too far off into Sagittarius for the heart of the scorpion. That's why I feel it falls more in Shala, but I do still feel that the alignments to Antares may be playing out on a subatomic quantum field level, because I do know that the grid location at Mount Shasta will be experiencing some re-encryptions. And Mount Shasta has always been deeply connected to Antares, along with several other star systems, of course, um, because most of these stargates are 12 to 24 dimensionally um, circuiting, so to speak as I'm going to get more into that in this update, kind of explaining more of that, but essentially Antares strongholds this location um, cosmologically, along with Pleiades and other celestial dynamics that are playing out here in terms of timelines, planetary timelines that are running into the Lemurian Akashic fields and things like this, underground systems and civilizations, all of these things, as you guys know. Um, but I feel like Mount Shasta is kind of like a transformative place that transmutes the warfare on the earth. So this is very cleansing. I feel it also ties into Hyades, similarly to the celestial bodies of Hyades are a planetary cleansing system. I feel Mount Shasta similarly operates in this way where it's more of like a sanctuary where the Lemurian timelines merge with the Achaean grid. And it really breaks up a lot of this disharmony and static electricity. So I also wanted to mention, I might be having some boots on the ground, Intel working on the gate there. Um, so I might have another update for you guys after this video. Um, hopefully the Intel comes in soon here on the skate system. I have some lovely sisters who are there uh, on the location, really doing a lot of uh, just energy work there. So we're going to maybe connect with them and just kind of get some inside scoop. They're highly psychic um, and they are really, they, they have the technology to scan into the grid. So uh, it will be interesting to see what comes up for them there. And I also wanted to mention, guys, if you are waiting for a reading with me, I just want to thank you so much for your submission of your chart or your reading. I just want to let you know, I am pushing out my wait times by about a week right now. Uh, so just know I will be in contact very soon about your reading. I apologize for the wait, but I have to get these transmissions out as they come in. I've just been sitting on so much information and I'm just about to technically explode at this point. So I'll be sending those readings very shortly. And I also wanted to mention, if you've noticed that my monthly readings have gone a little wonky. Like I'm kind of putting them out just spontaneously. Um, it's really because I've just been getting messages from the divine, uh, that I need to do my monthly readings by transmission only. Um, otherwise I'm fighting against the flow and I'm fighting against planetary alignment. So when you see readers putting out, and I'm not saying this is bad. I'm not saying this is wrong. Um, but when you're putting out readings against a planetary alignment of celestial bodies, um, you're kind of stretching for the information. So there's this, just this natural flow that kind of comes intuitively according to star systems that might just particularly be activating in accordance to planetary alignments. So that's just kind of how I've been basing my current philosophy off of. Um, once I get my scent line up and going, I might try to reorganize some structure with that, but it's just very difficult to uh, maintain like uh, doing a flow of specific star systems every single month, if they're not necessarily in a state of heightened activation on the earth. So that's kind of why I've been a little all over the place with that. I just wanted to let you guys know if anyone was expecting anything with more of, I guess, a structure, uh, in, in a more of a linear organized fashion. I do not live in a linear world. I am, uh, really existing by many, many calendarical systems. And I, I think I just made that word up, 
but I just don't really, I flow in and out of time essentially is what I'm saying. So time space. So I kind of navigate my world according to that, but I have also had some other Intel come in that I wanted to tell you guys about. This is about a supernova blast in Cygnus. Um, so I haven't had a lot of time to really dive into this uh, dynamic here on and in terms of uh, Earth participation and what it's actually uh, propagating here within these dimensions on Earth. But um, essentially, I did want to transmit this in this update today, as somehow it is still feeling very relative to current events. Um, I did keep seeing diamonds in the surrounding octagonal geomancy around the uh, gate structure at the Temple Mount around the Golden Dome. I was seeing that filled with a lot of diamond energy. This is why I'm telling you guys diamond sun hearts. This is, um, there's a lot coming up here. A lot of diamond sun activations at this time. I was seeing that as I was remote viewing into the structure. So I would just like to give a special thanks to Dana, Athena, Ashley, and Helio soul for bringing forth a lot of information that I'll be pertaining to this video today. I've had a lot of divine sisters come through with a lot of powerful, um, connections, revelations, information, intel, all of it. So I just want to particularly say thank you to Dana um, because she was letting me know about the Cygnus blast wave that is about 2,400 light years away from us. It is an explosion that created the blast wave that was caused by a dying star that was about 20 times more massive than the sun. And the explosion occurred between 10,000 and 20,000 years ago. And since the original explosion, the supernova blast wave has expanded from its center by about 60 light years. So it's like, it's continuing to expand. And this is a shock wave that is growing at a rate of around 350 kilometers per second. This information I am getting off of the NASA website. So I'll leave a link in the description. But NASA has said that the interaction of the ejected material and the low density interstellar material pushed a shockwave form veil like structure. Okay, so that's very interesting. Um, and I will be looking more into this and how this may be interrelated to the Atlantean occultism and also to the amnesia that has played out into the reincarnation cycles. As many of you know from my other Cygnus updates that um, I've gone extensive in-depth research and intel into the Cygnus systems. Please check out some of my other Cygnus video. Leave links in the description, of course. Um, but essentially the pharaohs, you know, all of their tombs, all of the underground tombs and shafts, um, particularly as Saqqara, another activating grid location currently, um, all of these aligned to Cygnus for uh, their eternal uh, technologies, immor immortality technologies, and reincarnation technologies, essentially. So all of that's kind of playing out. It's all uh, interconnected here with other things that are going on globally within the grids and the stargates. So I've been wanting to move on from the stargate of the den, from the temple mount, but the Anunnaki energy is strong. It is definitely a vortex. Um, I've been wanting to move on more to planetary grids that I've been tuning into. I've been getting a lot of other intel come in regarding the upcoming summer solstice activations, the hydra alignments at the serpent mounds, and its connection to global extraterrestrial cratorial structures. Okay. I've been hearing the words humanic cratorial structures over and over. So that's been coming through a lot. And I just keep seeing these locations becoming more pertinent to the activating grids. Okay, so I'm going to have some updates with that coming soon, but I'm still somewhat focused on the current running situations that are playing out at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the global Anunnaki stargate on the earth. So I'm jumping around a bit today. This is what happens in quantum galactic world like you're just kind of a lot of things are playing out and everything is interconnecting so we're just putting the dots together essentially it's just it's the diversity of global celestial happenings it's coming in quickly um so kind of going back to the Anunnaki Stargate. So why do I call the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the Anunnaki Stargate? For those of you who are new to my channel, you may not have caught these updates yet. 
Um, I'm going to leave links in the description. I basically break down in these three videos um, called the Cosmic Grid Update, the Four Quadrant Hybridization Society, the Anunnaki Stargate. Um, I have another video called Anunnaki Stargate Activated and an Anunnaki reading that I did for the Anunnaki Collective. Um, so I'll leave, like I said, links in the descriptions for all three of these videos. I highly recommend checking out these videos um, because it's definitely pertinent to the information transmitted today and also to the last three updates that I did on the Stargate of Aden. It um, fills in a lot of the blanks, um, fill in a lot of the pieces for you and putting all of this puzzle together just so you can catch up on the information, the grid networks and the star lineages pertaining to these particular stargates that we're talking about. But essentially it comes, <clears throat> the overall perception of this being the Anunnaki stargate um, is it comes from the descendants of Abraham because Abraham was known to be an Enlil priest which may in fact be how the collective gained its diverse percentages of Anunnaki DNA was through these inherent lineages, through the three Abrahamic religions, um, would be how this Anunnaki DNA became so global, right? Everybody having a percentage of it in them in some way or another, whether it's a higher percentage or a lower percentage, right? Um, everybody's carrying um, on a collective level connections to this. If you're a part of the Christos lineage, the Christos um, essaying grail line, um, you're going to be partially Anunnaki. Um, so all of this perception of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem being the Anunnaki Stargate really kind of comes from this, including King of Solomon, which his encryption keeps coming up on my radar pertaining to deeper insights of the Ark of the Covenant, whereabouts, the Temple Mount Stargate, global security seals, and why the drama continues to play out in Jerusalem. Um, the occult magic, the soul egregore wars that may stem from the seals controlling the archons and more. The magical King of Solomon was a Hebrew king. Um, and he was also a descendant from the tribe of Judah. So what percentage of uh, Anunnaki DNA was the King of Solomon? Um, it's interesting because he was granted as a qualified keeper of the Ark of the Covenant and the seals um, that he created um, may have been created as a decoy cloak around the Ark. Um, yeah, heads up to Helio Soul because we've been kind of diving into a lot of this. Um, but essentially, not only do I feel that these seals were placed as a cloak around the Ark, but also around um, the continent of Africa, which I covered, um, but also implanted in particular um, uh, grid lines and, and grid structures. King of Solomon was very, very intelligent. He had also perfected a version of flying saucers where he was able to implant planetary seals by flying. Um, this comes up in the flying chariot wheels in Ezekiel's throne. Um, the Arabic version of this, which is very much a part of the Temple Mount Soul Egregore Warfare Collective, um, it's just left out in the facets of the three Abrahamic religions, but the, um, oh, it was the Armenians. I'm sorry, the Armenians were an aspect of, of the Temple Mount more so, but the Arabians version of the magical flying carpets um, may have been this version of the airships that they used to place those seals around Africa, even in Tibet, in Arabia, in Iran. Um, and they also use these flying saucers to create world maps. So I believe all of this is examples of Tothian magic and technology being used in that time, still being used to this day, um, still continues to be used through the greater and lesser known seals of Solomon. 
um, that occultists are very much using now as we speak. So this magic stays alive. The seals stay alive. The security seals stay alive. Everything that was implanted in the grids around the ark, the cloaks, everything is still very much active because it's Tothian technology that stems from the uh, fall of Atlantis technically. So I'm going to kind of get into that more and explain that more in detail. But essentially, I did some remote viewing into this Stargate, into the Temple Mount, the Anunnaki Stargate. And guys, I have been so lit up like a Christmas tree. Okay, so I'm ready to share with you guys. Um, And you can kind of tell because I'm talking super fast. I'm trying to get all of this information out to you guys. Um, I just, uh, for my patrons, I just posted a video yesterday doing a guided remote view into the Temple Mount. So please check out this video if you are seeking to scan into this highly active Stargate portal. Um, Essentially, this portal will take you into Nibiru. So um, I seen that through the inverted golden dome under the mount in the Well of Souls um, that you can transport here. So (laughs) <laughs> it's a lot going on, but patrons, uh, please, uh, make sure to check out that video towards the end. I did talk a lot in the beginning. So the, um, the, uh, visualization and the activation is more towards the end of that video. And please feel free to join my Patreon, guys, patreon.com forward slash indigo angel, get the information, get the abilities to be able to look into some of these things yourself energetically, if you're not already doing it. But um, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, okay, guys, this is the meat and potatoes here. Um, I seen that this is an 18 dimensional Stargate. Okay, it's a 36 dimensional Stargate, but with 18 materialized gates with possibly another 18 that are in the antiparticle aspects of antimatter. Okay, so in total, The Temple Mount in Jerusalem would be a 36 dimensional stargate running subatomic, atomic, and materialized atoms. Okay, so this is a very advanced stargate. Most stargates on Earth are primarily universally 12 dimensional with 12 subatomic radial encryptions underlying that. Okay. Um, It displays kind of like a rotating sphere of radial identity participation in global collective manifestation fields um, that ties into all of the grid networks, all of the overlays, all of the control matrices, all of the phantom systems, all of these are all interconnected, overlapping, interlaying, um, uh, uh, converging, communicating, so to speak. So most of these typical stargates have a 24 dimensional rotation set. The stargate at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem has a 36 dimensional rotational set. Um, But like I said, 12 are only partially visible in a normal running stargate. So that's why it's a 12 strand DNA activation is because 12 are, are visible to those who have Um, expanded DNA strands to be able to see into the facets of those gate systems. So 12 strand DNA activations will allow you to see into those 12 uh, rotation sets. As you expand more in the DNA, you're going to start coming into the subatomic 24 dimensional rotation sets that are playing out partially into the anti-matter, anti-particle fields, um, essentially. So you have to really get your DNA up Um, and consciousness fully expanded to perceive a lot of this. Um, But you can really see how this gate is a hyper advanced stargate. It has colorful hues that exemplify all of the significant color frequency within those radial running templates in the stargate base itself. Um, And what I've seen is now the 18 materialized gates that are in the temple mount are actually smaller anti-clockwise running transduction gates that are siphoning off or spinning off of the main gravitational electromagnetic pulls of the main star structure itself underneath and over top of the dome. Okay, that was a freaking mouthful. But what I'm seeing is 12 of these gates at the Temple Mount are active and six of these are sealed 
off. And there is a reason for those six to be sealed off. This is strategic Tothian magic. It's beyond Tothian magic. It's I don't feel Toth is necessary. I mean, Toth is definitely a global mind. It is a po it is a um, polymorphous identity, which means that it can take many, many forms um, and it can change its identity. Um, so there are polymorphic collective fields that are operating a lot of these strategies that are unseen. Um, they're the minds behind the minds. Um, and it is just directly right now what I'm seeing, it's working directly with the Muhammad lines. Okay, the Akilin hives. Um, these are, um, they are uh, 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 the biological reasons behind um, the the wanting to have land power okay this is what's essentially pre preventing the third messiah from coming it's patriarchy wars of god essentially but all of the intricacies that are underlying those aspects are kind of coming forward so this is what i'm going to get up in this update i have to tell you guys this is uh my own interpretation of a lot of these things. Um, I always highly recommend that you vet out information yourself um, and just stay dedicated to your own gnosis. Take what information resonates, um, clear the rest, however you want to do it. It's just, I'm letting you guys know that um, it's all highly controversial at the end of the day. So I just want to go ahead and put a disclaimer on this video as we kind of jump into the more occult parts of it here in this later half. I want to let you know, just don't ever fully give yourself to something um, that you don't fully understand. Make sure that you're vetting information out yourself. Make sure that you, you are um, discerning things according to your own gnosis and, um, yeah, just putting a warning on it because a lot of these things are highly controversial. Yes, this is coming through my own human perception. Um, and so I'm just bringing forth the psychic information that I see as a planetary global grid reader. And so, um, it's up to you to, uh, um, decide what is and isn't for your consciousness. And so, um, I just wanted to throw that disclaimer out there before I go further, but I have been doing essentially some remote viewing and researching into the temple structures. Okay. So I'm going to actually go up and, uh, so I'm going to actually go ahead and put a picture I have drawn up and please do not laugh, guys. I am no artist by any means whatsoever, but I do want to show you guys what I am seeing here. Okay, so I drew this up. I took a picture of this out of my backyard because I had better lighting out there. I hope you guys can still see my head. Sometimes when I switch screens, it even if I move the... um the uh, screen with my face, it will kick it out. So hopefully it's still um, visible in the shot. Um, but essentially here, this is a, a picture that I drawn up. Um, and what I wanted to highlight here for you guys um, is what I am seeing in terms of these 18 dimensional gates um, and how I see the energy functionings of what's happening on a global level and accordance to other activating stargates at this time and how things are actually playing out in terms of manipulation of those particular Aquilan grids. Uh, this is this here is the Temple Mount Court in case in it's somewhat of like a cube. It's a rectangular structure or a square structure. This is kind of important how this is around the actual octagonal uh, dome rock here. You can actually pull up better pictures on the internet. So if you just want to Google search 
um, architectural structures of, of Temple Mount, you're going to get much better uh, pictures. But I wanted to draw this just because I wanted to draw in accordance to how I was perceiving things. Okay, but essentially the square structure around the Temple Mount, this retains the quantum energy within geometric dynamics. Okay, so these are strategic designs for encapsulating prayers, encapsulating quantum energy, um, collective energy that they use upon the judgment day. Okay, um, that's what the Well of Souls is known for. Um, and so basically they're striking hail and hellfire into the abyss of chaos. Um, and I'm going to explain that more as well. This also, because of this square structure around the Temple Mount, um, this may also connect into the Saturn moon matrix design because we see squares, we see uh, cubes, we see black cubes, we see this um, over areas where the Saturn moon matrix is running. Um, we also see this where black sun portals are starting to release. Essentially, I've talked about the um, black sun seal um, and that cap on ascension progression that it has placed a 10 dimensional cap within the central vertical planetary uh, ascension column of the planet. Okay, a lot of that's starting to fall away because more of the Aryan occultism timelines are starting to come to fruition. They're starting to awaken. They're starting to unthaw. They've been frozen light, essentially. But uh, so we see those black cubes over where Saturn moon matrices are running. So this is by design. And if that's true, right, that means that all square architecture on the earth period is feeding into this Saturn uh, moon matrix chain. Okay. Square architecture. So our houses are square. We're living in square houses. Okay. So on some energetic etheric level, that's all playing out on a quantum level. Okay. But that's not the main point of focus for this picture here today. Um, what I want to talk about the most is the locations of the gates themselves. So these gates, you can see I have labeled here one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 18 around that square structure. Okay, see, these are actual physical gates that are located around the entire court of the cube of the square structure. Um, and these are doorways. When I say gate, I mean a physical doorway that somebody can walk through. Okay, these are all around as entrance points um, into the main structure of the temple, into the main structure of the stargate. But each one of these doorways, each one of these gates are actually spinning in the anti-clockwise motion, which is a magnetic spin. Um, so the spirals downwards into the inner earth. Okay. That's 12 open gates that they have spinning in an anti-clockwise magnetic pull down into inner earth. That's pulling like a vacuum. This is also pulling into the Bermuda triangle. So I'm going to kind of explain that. Um, but essentially each one of these gates are smaller connection funnels, I want to say into the solar gate systems of Giza, Egypt. That's why I said that's a highly activated system at this time. Also into Saqqara, Egypt. Okay, pretty much every gate really that sits on that 30 degree north horizontal ley line. So you can see here in my really bad drawing. Um, I put the planetary 30 degree north horizontal ley line. That's where all of these stargates are essentially sitting. Okay, it's right on that line. So everything is funneling down into that ley line. Um, this is the global line of planetary control. Don't forget that this also runs through China. Okay, so a lot of countries, a lot of systems, a lot of galactic uh, nations are feeding off of this particular ley line and it's the most it's the ley line with the most turmoil on the planet essentially stuck energy um it's it's the most dangerous ley line if you are a quantum life energy trying to navigate through this trust me you might not make it out alive okay i feel this is a link 
to the fabrics of the Aquilan networks. Okay, and also to the Atlantean cataclysm. The fact that what I'm seeing is this inverted, there's an inversion happening here. So it's an inversion funnel that's um, sending quantum energy. So you could see my little scribbles here. This is a quantum exchange. And this is funneling this energy from this gate site to the Bermuda Triangle. Because remember, Bermuda Triangle and this particular stargate are all in relativity to that 30 degree north horizontal ley line. And I also want to say that the lion and the Aquila grid are actually at war. Um, and it's 3.33 right now, my time. Um, and this is what they keep trying to cover up. Okay, if they want to create so much confusion, they don't want to let you know that the lion grid and the Achillean grid are constantly at warfare over control. Okay, so these are the two grids that are constantly at heads with each other. And it's annoying. Um, it's like two little naughty kids that have never been taught any respect for their elders. They've never been reprimanded. They're just allowed to run amok and create infantile type messes all the time um, with no, I guess, discipline. Um, and they just keep repeating the shenanigans over and over again. Um, so that's kind of what's going on between Aquila and the Lion Grid is they're constantly at warfare. If you don't know about the Aquila Network, please see the link in the description in this video. I'll leave a link to a video I did on the Aquilan network. Um, and if you check out the Cosmic Grid update, the Anunnaki Stargate, the one that I recommended in accordance to why I keep calling the Temple Mount the Anunnaki Stargate, uh, please see that video. I do explain the Lion Grid more in that video as well. But you will notice around the building, around the Golden Dome, um, this uh, the, the actual circular dome here in the center um it's there's an eight-sided uh octagonal geometry around it um and so this is important to notate because this is used at all high powered solar stargates on the earth including the fourth planetary stargate in giza egypt um, in Giza, Egypt, they're running octagonal encoding into the landmass. If you pyramidal view the actual pyramids, they are octagonal shaped. The eight sided structure is the most dominant geom geometry that runs at the most powerful stargates in the world. Okay, because it's such a high solar geometry. It runs the Melchizedek, the Merovingian solar living light codes into the landmass the architecture affecting human behavior, the hive mind biological simulations for authority of land power and several other reasons, right? Too long for me to list here today, but I kept getting glimpses within this uh, octagonal dome, within this octagonal geometry architecture, I kept getting glimpses of diamonds here in the octagonal encasing, okay? So come to find out that slave owners in Israel are undergoing raging wars as we speak over diamonds. That, and it's just interesting how the research ties in. So shout out to my Diamond Sons Human Girl Line group for bringing this stuff forward because you guys are amazing. You give me a lot of this intel. Um, but the diamond, that the diamond export is one of, uh, Israel's number one financial gains, but Israel itself does not contain any diamonds. So how is this happening? It sounds like a lot of uh, shenanigans are playing out here, right? Um, I also see that this may be related to the Cygnus connections, right? That supernova blast has something to do with this as well. Um, because I keep seeing through what I keep hearing the words humonically cratorial like energy structures that are being, uh, they're sinking down into the ground. It's like a bowl. Um, so this is what the well of souls is, okay? It's a cratorial structure that actually vibrates off the moans of man. Um, and it's, it's, pulling into the ground. It's pulling me in when I remote view in like a vortex. Um, and so 
what I keep seeing is that there actually might be extraterrestrial matter down there, metals down there, um, and different types of non-human chemistry, like non-earthly chemistry, um, that are not on our, that are not on our periodic table, um, that this is kind of, uh, down there and what keeps this area so activated. Um, I also see that there's golden technology there too. So under the well of souls and underneath, I put another line underneath there that there's actually a gold plate. Okay. Um, and so there's a lot that's happening here. It was designed specifically this way. This was passed down from Enlil. This was passed down from Abraham. This was passed down from Moses. This was passed down from the Anunnaki fathers. This was gifted to them to build the King of Solomon temple on that first foundational stone this way. Okay. It's like a boiling soup bowl. Uh, of plasma, a powered magnetic plasma that sits on top, okay, um, right underneath. I and I don't think I fully explained this, but I kept seeing the Temple Mount as an inverted image underneath. So what that gold dome is above, that gold dome is below. I seen an inversion of the same golden dome um, below as a spinning Merkaba. That's why I placed it down underneath here. So you see like my inversion line, the inverted image of the temple mount below, the well of souls below, the line below of another um, uh, additional temple that's underneath the well of souls. This goes down even further. Um, and this is where the tunnel systems begin throughout Jerusalem. So there's actual secret tunnel systems in Jerusalem, deep in the heart of the city, where you can go and actually find more gates that will lead you to these tunnels. So um, this spinning golden Merkaba basically gave me, when I accessed it, it gave me access to Nibiru. So I actually seen Nibiru, okay? Um, and they kept showing me, um, as I accessed that, that every day is a thousand years for what we can account for here. And that all of those records of that information are held here in the well of souls. But besides that, I also seen something else. I seen that there is a sense that the Islamic Quran is in agreement with the Sumerian text. Um, there was like what I seen when I scanned into it deeper, that there was like an echo here of an Anunnaki assembly that was basically appearing in and through the Islamic sound frequency all through the Temple Mount as I scanned in. Okay, it was really wild. I kept seeing Islamic eagles um, that looked equivalent to the Anunnaki. Okay, so there is a brotherhood here. There is a brother in here. Um, I also kept seeing overlays of original tribors playing out around the dome, right at the gate, the particular gate that is called the gate of tribes. Um, again, anti-clockwise spin here, sending this frequency into the earth. Okay, so it's, this is like, this is like where the core essence of every religious warfare is playing out. You can see why um, there is a thousand year war here going on that is never ending. We just forget about it and it comes back, forget about it and come back. And this plays straight into the soul egregores of the 12 tribes, the ones who left Egypt and came to the Holy Land to find the promised land. I'm being shown that at that gate of tribes, that that's what actually leads into the lion's gate. There's a gate there with a lion's head in front of it, and that leads into the lion's gate. So the gates, the overlays, they are interconnected um, and they are functioning off of one another, um, but there's just a lot of blockages in between. But it all kind of makes sense to me now, okay? So the Muslims are guarding every facet of the dome. 
Okay. Also the fourth planetary stargate in Egypt as well. We can no longer ignore this fact. Okay. This is fact. The Muslims control the fourth planetary stargate in Giza, Egypt. The Muslims also control the Anunnaki stargate in the temple Mount in Jerusalem. Why are the two most powerful stargates on the earth in their hands? What does this tell us about who is really controlling the planet? Okay. That's the Muhammad's Allah prayer to Allah. Okay. And with those Eagle connections, also my experience going to Heliopolis, I visibly was seeing the Eagle emblem everywhere through the Islamic military. Okay. That is the global headquarters of the Aquila patriarchy network on earth. It is running from Heliopolis in Egypt. There is no longer any doubt about this in my mind. The Muhammad's hold this torch um, and they are the ones enforcing this world through the Anunnaki Stargate, through the Aquilan grid. You have to remember the Aquilans hijacked the Seraphim's identity. Okay. That's a very real thing that is playing out here. That is why serpents are demonized globally on this earth. And why is it that the Jews can only access one of the functioning open gates at the temple Mount? Why is it all remaining 12 gates that are functional rotating anti-clockwise functional, not the sealed ones. There's six more sealed gates. Why are they only allowed to be accessed by Muslims? Okay, so Muslim prayers of men over the age of 40, those are the only people that are allowed to go into the, and pray into the well of souls. Well, the well of souls is a funnel system that generates quantum energy. You see my little quantum funnel here to the left and generates into the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, this it's an inverted power generating uh, generating line on the 30 degree north horizontal ley line that goes right into the Bermuda. This is the fall of Atlantean technology. Okay, this is it's wild. I keep seeing the quantum exchanges right at the point of the contact in the inversion funnels. It literally blows my mind. It makes me almost want to cry. Um, at the same time, I can visibly see how the earth grid is being controlled by the patriarchy um, through, qu through quantum spiritual uh, technologies, Tothian technologies, um, polymorphism technologies. They are only allowing prayers to Allah into the Anunnaki Stargate. So does this mean it's hijacked? Or does it mean that Muhammad was an Anunnaki heir? Was Muhammad in Orion Nibiru Royal? Okay, what does this have to do with the Stargate of Aden? Okay, what are they protecting here? What are they hiding here? It's important to know that the Islamics have purposely closed certain gates to prevent certain things from happening. Okay, their prevention is protection, they say. They say they're protecting things from happening but they sealed six of the gates since the medieval Islamic times, okay? They closed off the golden gate. And now this is the gate that the Messiah is supposed to walk through. They closed it off, okay? The golden gate is the only gate built on the first Solomon temple. So I believe personally, from what I've seen, what I've psychically scanned into, what I've researched, links in the description for as many references I can possibly give to vet out information yourself. I believe that this golden gate, this is the root of the war. Here is what needs to be lifted. So if you're a global healer, you're an energy worker, you're doing grid work, you might want to focus some healing to the golden gate. This is uh, what needs to be restored here is where the third Messiah will walk through. And here is where the third temple of Solomon will essentially be rebuilt. Okay. This is, I don't, I don't believe that this gate is necessarily along this wall, but I believe the golden gate is off to the side of it somewhere, but not with the Aquilas here. 
this cannot happen with the Achillean grid being the strongest grid on earth. You have to realize that the lion grid is not the most powerful grid here. The Achillean grid is. The Achillean grid runs the world and they will prevent and stop at all cost anything from coming through that golden gate, okay? Until the regime of power shifts, we will not see prophecy technically unfold. Um, and it's interesting because Christians want the dome destroyed. Jews have lost access to it mostly. Um, and the gate technology is the inner mechanics that are basically propagating the entire global patriarchy control, okay? That's kind of what I see here. I almost see Muhammad as a descendant of Enlil. Um, and I've been getting a lot of messages that Enlil wasn't the good guy. Enki was the good guy. Okay, so some of you may disagree with that. That's fine. But I can't deny what I'm being shown and what I feel and what I see. The war is still between the brothers at the end of the day. So when did Islam come into the picture of the Sumerian timeline at the point of being unplugged, at the point all galactic wars were basically erased from your memory? This is the largest stargate on earth that contributes to reincarnation. You have to remember, this is the largest stargate on earth that contributes to reincarnation. These are not Trinity gates. These are not little... Uh, uh, gates that are harvesting, uh, you know, solution. Yeah, there's other gates that are doing these things, whatever. This is the largest stargate on earth that contributes to reincarnation. And they are using the pit of soul, the cave of souls, the well of souls to reap punishment upon man through Islamic prayers. Have you ever heard the Muslims pray? Now, I don't have nothing against the Muslims. I don't. I don't have nothing against Islam. I actually enjoyed my experience in Egypt. I thought that everybody was very kind and very catering. Um, I had the best time. But have you ever heard the seriousness of the Muslim prayers? You probably haven't because they don't honestly allow women, because it is a patriarchy society, they don't allow women into a lot of these prayers, the prayers of 40-year-old men and older, okay? They pray for wrath of vengeance upon one's soul. Um, for what they consider sin in the most form of brutality. It is very brutal, okay? Um, and this is what is being sent into the earth grids here. This is what's being sent into the Bermuda Triangle. This is what's being transferred back and forth from Saqqara and Giza, Egypt, operating under the octagonal geomancy, okay? This is why we are blocked from our true Anunnaki ancestors because this is a seal, this is a seal here. Saqqara, Egypt was where reincarnation technologies were fully developed and studied the most. And this is also linked and merged into the Anunnaki Stargate. This is the beginning point of the promotion of the fallen masculine systems is what I have been seeing essentially. So I know this is deep. I know this is quantum. I know this is diving and stretching into it. Um, but there's a lot of truth here. Um, like I said, I highly encourage you to vet this information out yourself. Do the research yourself. I'm not making this stuff up. Um, and I'm not uh, not telling you anything that I haven't seen um, with directly with my own third eye. So this is what I'm bringing forward today. I don't really even know what to say or where to go from here. Um, I kind of feel like I need to take a step back and sit with a lot of this information and let it see where it guides me to next. Um, I really still want to work on um, a new seal removal as well. I feel that that's very important um, in terms of a lot of the things that are coming forward at this time, but I have yet to see deeper into the Solomon seals. Um, I know that they're much more than just seals to control uh, light and dark entities. So I'm going to be diving more into that research here. And I love you guys all so much. I hope that I didn't get too serious with it. I hope I wasn't scaring anyone today. Uh, 
please uh, check the references and please check out all of the recommended videos from this energy update today. And if you would like to uh, join my Patreon, please feel free to do that. Patreon.com forward slash Indigo Angel um, did just put that recent visualization to remote view into the Temple Mount if you would like to look yourself. Um, also, you can find all of my services at indigoangel222.com. If you'd like to work with me more interactively, if you'd like to do a J-Seal removal, Starseed origin reading, you can find me at indigoangel222.com. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter um, because I do put a lot of this stuff in writing um, and send out monthly to you guys as well. Okay, everyone. So I love you all so much and namaste, guys. <laughs>